So, you'd love to activate a one-man de expedition to somewhere like a nice, warm Pacific island, yes? Well, first off, you'll need to have a license to operate. But how? Well, pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, let's get started. Hello, my name is Rolly, ZL1BQD. Welcome. Now, before you can do anything about getting a license uh, to operate out of a Pacific DX location, You'll need a license in your own uh, home country. It'll need to show the following basic essentials in order to obtain a reciprocal license. So come and have a look over my shoulder and we can study my license as an example. The license must be a genuine uh, license as issued from your country. I suggest that you know, what you do is you take a, uh, a copy of your license and get it notarized. In fact, take two copies and get them both notarized. Keep one yourself and give the other one to the uh, the, country, uh, the issuing authority of the country that you're visiting. It must have your full name and full address on it. Likewise, it must also have your call sign on it. If there's a, uh, uh, a validation, a, a date validation on your license, that must be shown clearly. Most licenses, of course, are uh, uh, issued for, for life. What is really important, though, is that this little wording here, CEPT, equivalent class one, or just CEPT TR6101, or CEPT 6102. That then is a, an agreement between, inter, it's an inter-country uh, agreement. So the country you're visiting knows very well that you have uh, set an examination in your country that's equivalent to their uh, requirements for amateur radio. I'll put a link in the uh, description below uh, explaining exactly what CEPT is. You need to read that and understand that, what it means for your country, what it means for the country that you're visiting. The next thing you'll need, of course, is a valid passport. Please make sure it's up to date. It'll need at least six months uh, on your passport. In fact, most countries won't let, allow you to leave without at least six months of um, um, valid, validity on your uh, passport. Please check it. Many people get caught. Many countries such as Samoa, uh, Fiji, Tonga, Cook Islands, uh, they're very easy to get a, 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 pa a passport or very easy to visit. Just rock up with your passport and you're away. However, some countries uh, are a little bit more difficult. For instance, uh, just some of the ones I got here. Uh, Timor Leste, for instance. Timor Leste, uh, you will have to get a visa uh, to visit Timor Leste. It'll cost thirty dollars. When I uh, back in uh, two thousand and seventeen, anyway, thirty US dollars. So you have to get a, a visa, and a visa on entry is uh, is fine. But uh, be prepared to uh, pay for uh, an entry visa into Timor Leste if you wish to go to Timor. The same with Maldive Islands, uh, Maldives, uh, they required a, uh, a um, visa as well. And Papua New Guinea, uh, for instance, uh, their, their visa is a, it takes up a full page of your passport. So every time you visit Papua New Guinea, there's a, another full page of your passport taken up and it uh, doesn't take very long before your passport can get uh, quite full of um, of entry visas, particularly from the likes of Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, 
and a few other countries uh, like that. So some countries will require a, um, uh, an entry or a visitor's permit uh, or an entry visa, uh, which um, Papua New Guinea used to have to pay for it. It, was, uh, it used to be $70 uh, US dollars at one time. Uh, now, if you go in there as a visitor, it is uh, free. But uh, if you're going in uh, as a work permit, um, then you'll need to get a uh, working visa and that, they're quite expensive. So that's a passport, a valuable document. Please don't uh, forget to take it with you. <laughs> uh, and you'll need to present that uh, in order to get a uh, amateur radio license, simply to prove who you are and what you, and um, yeah, who you are really to support your application for an amateur radio license. Now in the main, that's about uh, all the documentation that you need to visit the most Pacific Islands, most of Melanesia, Micronesia, and the Indian, and the Indian Ocean. Now, if you want to operate on some of the very rare and exotic locations, you'll more than likely have to get uh, landing permits as well. For example, every New Zealand operator can as a right operate uh, on the Kermitic Islands by changing the prefix, for example, from ZL1BQD to ZL8BQD. So the license is not an issue, but in order to operate from the Kermitic Islands, I'd uh, have to have a landing permit from the Department of Conservation. Uh, that's almost impossible nowadays, because the island is now closed up for conservation purposes. Likewise, Auckland Islands is closed uh, now, and now is a um, World Heritage Site. Now, almost impossible to get uh, uh, landing permits for the Auckland Islands as well. Now, Rotuma is a, a, a good example. It's very easy to operate uh, from Rotuma, easy to get there. But in order to uh, stay in Rotuma, you have to have a previous arrangement with a family that lives on Rotuma. So, so you can stay with them uh, because there is no other accommodation for visitors on Rotuma. Well, that is a little insight into the paperwork for one of uh, for a one-man expedition into the Pacific. In my next video in this series, I'll be talking about some of the other necessities and logistics of a one-man expedition. So make sure you uh, press the subscribe button below and ring the little bell. That way I can let you know when the next video in this series is released. So until then. Bye now.